All right, super excited for this one. My main man, Steve Chang here, and we're gonna talk about the basketball. Also known as the b-ball book. I got the link in the description there. Steve, thank you, man, for letting me do all this. Look, we got all these people watching, but break this down for me, man. You're a, ch you're a children's book author now, so how did this- Un Unpublished. But... Unpublished. <laughs> We'll get to that, but uh, how did this all start? We'll give you the idea that ding. You kind of said it in my letter uh, on Instagram, but for people who don't know, what made you say, hey, I'm going to write a children's book. Uh, four kiddos now, right? You know, it, the the true story behind it was um, my, my wife. Okay. She was the one who said, uh, she came up to me, she said, you know, there aren't any books about children's books about basketball and um there's a need there there was a need for it mm -hmm. and so uh of course i said no i don't want to do it <laughs> and then my wife was like no you should do it so i did it yep because you do what your wife tells you right absolutely absolutely <laughs> so you got to kind of put it uh in words yeah but i thought it was also a really good opportunity to um you know share she said you know write it for your kids um, right. Share what you've learned about basketball and, and about life, and uh, put into a book. So, and it's really hard to put into words too. You know, all the off the court principles. Steve, Steve and I played uh, together, but first let's talk about this, man. I want you guys to take a look at the first, this. Probably made your life miserable because uh, it's probably made it so expensive. And guys, the link is in the description too. If you guys want to check it out, you can check it out. Um, but this had to be a debate. It straight up is like a basketball and spalling itself. Did this make things tough? Like the, the pricing and so forth? Yeah, it made, um, it's made it a little uh, expensive. Um, right. But as a, uh, I guess, uh, self-employed, I'm trying to <laughs> figure out how to bring the price down but still keep the authenticity. Because I was kind of the idea I had when I had the vision for the book is to have it as a and, and the value is, is there, um, right? Uh, so people can check this out. Uh, you got the IG handle, right? Yes. Uh, Rebalbook.com. Uh, um, why don't we go through and just freaking read it? Uh, read it now one time. What we'll do is we'll take, if that's okay with you, and then we'll kind of talk about the things uh, behind it. So uh, I go, and then you go. And I, right. I, I want right. to hear your insight about the method to the madness kind of uh, behind that. And if you can't see it on Facebook, sorry, you're gonna have to check it out, but I'm gonna keep it here for the YouTube that I'll be uploading later. Benitez, Prince Benitez is watching uh, Benitez! Hey, Prince. Prince. Prince Fernandez, how you doing? Good to see you, Prince. Prince played with us at Notre Dame too. I had some great times. Um, but this thing gets deep, man. You gotta, you gotta check it out and we'll talk about each principle. Um, so the first one goes, for the kiddos who are watching, I'll, I'll do the first one. Around them orange, I got swiggly lines, small little bumps made of leather, so fine. So you chose the character to actually be the ball. Yeah, that, that was uh, an accident, I guess. I don't know, it just kind of right. started out like that. And we're going to talk about the hilarious drawings in here in a second. Um, and I go bounce. I go dribble. Oh, you got this one. I'm sorry. Okay, I go bounce. I go dribble. You can give me a spin. Shoot me up high and watch me go in. And, and there's so much going on here. We'll get to there. You know, basketball, yes, that is me. One point or two. I can make even three. And I'll talk later about why it's so important and kind of the research behind reading to your kids, which was just phenomenal. I didn't even know. I haven't had kids yet. Steve has four little ones right now. Um, <laughs> But what I love most about being a ball are the lessons I teach to one and to all. Uh, s some basketball players are short and some are tall. The color of your skin doesn't matter at all. Why did you think that was important? Because it's kind of self-explanatory, right? Sports, the great unifier. It's the one place where it doesn't matter what you look like, right? Either you have game or you don't. But I feel like you're really talking to your kids, right? Yeah, that was kind of yeah cool. I think um, I mean at least for that page I don't know I always thought that was something that so was um, 
so cool about sports, especially basketball, is that it, you know, it doesn't really matter where you're from or what you look like or how much money you have, how much money you don't have. It's like you got to find a way to work together to win, and um, it's helped me meet people from all different types of uh, walks of life, and um, I'm so grateful for it. When we met Benitez, <laughs> Eric Bossom, yeah. guy comes in with cowboy boots and <laughs> dipping his mouth, and then he's dunking like crazy. Um, unbelievable, great times, and I think it's a great thing for the uh, the kiddos as well to learn that early on. But it gets far deeper, man. I'm just I'm just get, get we're just getting started. Uh, how much money you have to me, it's the same. You must work together to win at this game. We kind of just talked about that uh, already, but it's kind of the one place where none of that stuff matters, right? You got to work together. You got to put all that aside, and I'm sure that's, what were your thoughts on that? Why did you feel that was important, that money don't mean crap? Yeah. Archbishop yeah. Mitty Kid talking. <laughs> um, Classes put aside, occupations put aside. It's yeah, I don't You got to put the ego aside, and, and you hoop together right i mean where it's like one of the only areas in life where it's like it, that really isn't a it's fair it doesn't matter it's, everyone's equal yeah. everywhere else in life it's like you know your money how much money you have and those things really, and if steve's uh, sweating when i arrived right now he was pushing two kids up a hill uh out here and in, in burbank and and plus we always sweat constantly anyways it's my daily workout been sweating our whole damn life um uh, on two the next, if you, if you do fall, get a scrape on your knee, remember getting back just shows who you'll be. Life's universal principles, again, get back up, you're going to get knocked down, right? And yeah. putting that in kids uh, early and uh, expect that, right? You're going to put it in, in, their, in their head, right? Of course. You feel, you of course. feel the same way? Yeah, no, I definitely agree with the, with, especially with my kids now, there's a lot of falling down, things like that, but. You know, I think there is the literal, you know, falling down aspect of the book. But when they get older, I think there's times when, uh, when life you, will. Yeah, and if you go, you just ignore it, right? When they fall. <laughs> no, I hear that all the time from parents. If you give them attention towards it, then they'll do the fake cry. There's time. Right? You, 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 you uh, decipher which is the real cries and the fake cries. But, um, right. yeah, but I think in life, you know, when you get older, you know, there's times when you, when you metaphorically fall. Right. You get... You get knocked down, and you don't know how to get back up. Right? Life will kick you while you're down, man. Life um, will kick you, man. We're, put, we're, we're, we're putting it in their head early with that, right? Um, I love you, dude. You did an awesome, awesome job uh, with this. Uh, winning is great. It's the reason we play, but you will learn very uh, quick. You don't win every day. And there's far deeper meaning to that of how to handle loss, mm -hmm. right? I think it gets in, into sportsmanship, but you're not going to win every day. Right? With these kids, it's kind of become uh, something else, right? It'll ruin the whole day. What was going through your mind you felt is important? Kind of self, a way for them to deal with loss, be yeah. ready for that? Yeah, I just think, you know, I was a, you know, when I was in high school playing, um, you know, our team, we we didn't win a lot. We had a lot of losses. Um, Mitty, what powerhouse? <laughs> there was what. There was a time, man. There was a time, <laughs> and I feel like those days were um, were very. Uh, they kind of made me and my teammates into who we were. Uh, you know, you have to go through some some tough times to kind of mm. figure out who you are. But I think they're as needed as the wins. You need the lo the losses to right to enjoy the good times. Yeah, right? they make it more special. All right, what do we got? There will be there'll be times when you lose. You may feel like less, but you must learn to lose before becoming a success. I think you just answered that well, brother. Now this eye, people may cry. She's too short to be good, but it might be an advantage to be misunderstood. I love that you addressed girls in there, right? Yeah. Is that the wife said? You better have girls in there too. <laughs> no, that was when we had our, our daughter, and I was like, you know. I want a book. I want a book for her. So. Right, it's gonna be for both. Uh, maybe you're fast. Maybe you're smart. Maybe you're the one who has the most heart. We all uh, unique when we step on the court. Finding your gifts make you good at this sport. 
I'll let you go first with that one, but I think you saw in my notes too that understanding your roles as well, right? On the courts, every kid wants to be Steph Curry, everybody wants to shoot threes, but if you want to be on the court, you know, you can play poster, do those type of things, bring value. So essentially, it's embedding those things early that everybody is going to have to play their part. Right? Yeah, the court, I, think, I think there's, um, I mean, I think there truly is on and off the court. I think everyone has a uh, has a purpose, and sometimes it's just finding out what... Self-awareness. Yeah, right? self-awareness, finding out what, what those things are. Um, but yeah, I found, you know, when I got older, I feel like I'm very good at, you know, setting screens. It's like I could just set screens on people all day. I don't need to be the one scoring and shooting and things like that. And, uh, and if that's your thing, do your thing. And these kids are watching the NBA. I feel like they're they're missing that part. What value can you give to your team, given the players that you have right then and there, and understanding your role and knowing your roles? But everybody just wants to shoot threes or wants to dunk, right? But by embedding this in these these kids early, I think I think it's, it's a wonderful. That's what goes on in my mind. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I hope I captured that somewhat. You did, man. <laughs> uh, let's see. Here. If you're not good at first, don't give up on me. It takes a lot of practice to find how good you can be. So obviously he's t talking to the ball himself, but translate for me, Steve. Um, what do you, what do you fe feel with this adversity? Just because you're not giving, you know, things aren't going right the first time. You just give up on something and go yeah, to the next. I think I think that's you know, this is the a life lesson, right? It's about um, you know anything, anything, anything. It takes passion, and I think it takes a lot of hard work. Um, right. And I hope that my children realize that someday that you know, it ain't gonna be, uh, it ain't gonna be easy. Man. Yep. It ain't gonna be easy. You gotta put in the work to to get where you want to be. So. And setting that expectation. So many life principles, man. I always thought about reading this book. It's just so hard to put into words, and only athletes know. And you did it in a children's book. <laughs> good, man, good, that's good, uh, good. That, that's very cool. And I'm proud of you for that. And that's why I just took a red eye to L.A. and just shut up here <laughs> right now on a dime. Um, he's a very busy man, and I know that sometimes we got to just get things done. Thank you all for joining us. By the way, check out the, the description uh, as well. Uh, the B-Ball book dot com. Uh, straight landing page. Um, your wife's an attorney. H how did you address the whole publisher thing? Because that's such a, a, a mess. I think you did the, the right thing by, uh, it's 2019, right? By avoiding all that, creating a landing page. Yes, the marketing ain't going to be as easy, but sometimes these book distributors, they don't they don't see things through, and there's probably a lot of hassle and bustle. So did she suggest that as well? Is And they're going to want a huge cut, like Harry Potter got refused 18 times before somebody finally took a gamble on it, which proved they don't know what the heck they're talking about, right? Uh, how, how did you attack that part? Which is so just too straight up. We'll do it on our own. I, I didn't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> you were basically like, okay, this is the only way we're going to do this. That's the only way I knew. How, I don't know much about publishing books or anything like that. Um, just get it out there. I feel like it's a, similar to acting. It's mm. like kind of need an agent right. to get into a, you know an audition but how to get an agent nobody will accept submissions right it's a very uh, kind of who knows who world and it's kind of a lock and key type world so right um i didn't know and so we were just like okay we'll just try this self-publishing route and uh, we'll see how it goes I think it's hopefully, it's, hopefully it's um hopefully it it's gonna do off. great i know it's gonna do great it'll we'll withstand we'll the test of time by the way steve um is, is an actor as well. That's not how I know him. I know the humble, <laughs> humble before, Steve. But for those uh, who don't know, uh, any, anything you're working on, you want to uh, plug Stephen A. Chang. There's, there's a few others. There's another. There's a Stephen Chang as well. He's in a chemistry or something weird. That's why I kept throwing A in there. <laughs> but uh, just to catch people up, uh, how are things coming along? You know, it, it's like trying to be a musician and go to Hollywood. I respect you for doing it, but... Uh, did a little tidbit, 90210, everything before us. Uh, any any other things that, that you're cur currently in the works? Um, a, little, a couple of things in the works. Uh, it was. If you can't share anything, that's totally fine. 
Improv um, classes every week. I heard that you got to do. Uh, that used to be. That was the former life. After kids, there's there's not much time for improv class. You're doing improv every day with the kids. With the kids, yeah, with the kids, man. Um, I mean, it was cool. The thing that opportunity I got with, um, I was had a very, 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 very small part in the Captain Marvel movie. What? Um, so. Oh, you mentioned to me at the wedding. Yeah. And my it's first very question small. was like, Wolverine. That was totally off. It's not Captain. <laughs> Marvel, we used to love Wolverine. Yeah. What, what, what's uh, what went with that? Um, it was, it was. I mean, I play like a, an extra. I, close enough. <laughs> um, I played like a drill sergeant who uh, gives the main character a hard time. Um, you kind of briefly see me in a flashback. But this is—is is this the Captain Marvel <coughs> Avengers type deal that just went number one? Right? Yeah, I it was. Over, I think it's, I think it was very popular. Yeah, I it was top grossing over something else. I remember breaking. I tried to take my son to it, but since it wasn't a cartoon, we uh, we didn't last long. Okay, so Got I haven't it. I haven't seen it yet. Got it. We had this long old crazy notes. I knew we weren't going to need this. I knew we weren't going to use this. Uh, but we're, we'll we'll carry on. We're gonna, we'll get through uh, the book as well, just so you guys can see who who, you know, who aren't athletes the real deeper meaning here that I think it's it's really great for all kids and universal principles because they all translate uh, to life essentially in one way. Um, or another. Um, shooting me up into the hoop can be fun, but a team is made up of more than just one. Keep your head high. You'll see all that you missed helping your team win with the assist. Um, this goes back to the values of it's a game of pass, right? Uh, and again, kids, just, they judge themselves by how much they scored that day versus all the other little things um, what, what was going through your head with it? I mean, it literally means what it means, but in your mind, you felt it's important for your son or daughter to know. Yeah, I think there's a... I learned this much, much, much later in life, but there's much value in um, physically and, and metaphorically keeping your head up, looking looking, and seeing your surroundings. Vision. Um, seeing what's happening around you. Um, because kind of all the answers are right there if you look. If you're not in your head, if you're not thinking how things should be or what I want it to be, but if you just kind of just see what's happening around you, then um, the lane will open up, the right pass will open up. But, um, but that takes a long time to learn, I feel like. Right. And putting yourself before others, knowing that sometimes the pass and the assist that is, is more important than the guy who scored uh, the ball as well, which goes back to knowing your role. I mean, maybe you're a point guard who's great at that. Coaches love that it's not all about how many points did you score on that day. That's what went through my mind. You can see what went through the creative genius's uh, uh, mind. Um, but again, it's so important to read to your children. I'll talk about that more and some of the statistics that I uh, came across. Um, but let's let's get through this book uh, first. Who who did all these drawings? <laughs> Tell me that was you. Sadly, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> I know They're it's great. Not. They're great, and there's hilarious things going on through and within there, but um, I think the, the core here of the book itself was uh, was the most powerful for me, even though I'm not a child. I know that it, it, uh, it will be. Okay, this is a little, kind of a controversial t topic with the eighth place trophies. Uh, <laughs> individual awards aren't as good as they seem. It's much more rewarding when you do it uh, as a team. Um, oh, these are all rhetorical but it's again putting it in our kids heads that it's not all about how you did right? putting the team first um, anything else that was going through your head feel free to elaborate in individual awards aren't as good as they seem it's much more rewarding when you do it as a team it's also much more harder yeah I, you know I think it's something I learned um, it's kind of a hard lesson I learned in life but um, you know I had some success in high school uh, and I got recognized for things, and um, but we, we didn't win. <laughs> we weren't we weren't we weren't very uh, we weren't getting any wins. And then, um, it's kind of like scoring forty points in a game, and then you lose. you lose. It's not really worth anything. So finding a way to kind of you know again work with the team and and find a way to do it together. It's much more um, fulfilling and satisfying than any individual. Yeah, I said I couldn't agree more, but I honestly want to hear your thoughts on this. <laughs> and, uh, 
And I, I got it. Um, all right, let's move on because the second half just gets even more powerful and deeper to me. Can be more proud of this guy. The, the opponents you'll play won't always be friends, uh, but always make sure you shake hands in the end. I thought this was so important. This next one goes into it uh, too, but sportsmanship, just dealing with loss. Things aren't always going to go your way in life, but I think it takes a, a dropping of ego to be able to shake that guy's uh, hand and, and say, hey, it's all good. I'm going to get you next time. Right? Um, how do you, how and why do you feel that that's important for children to understand? Because I feel like somebody who's not in athletics that moves on with life without accepting that, there's a certain level of uh, victimism, of uh, finger pointing, uh, of this and that. Um, I feel like that's so important for kids, no matter what organized um, you know, team you play in. Um, is that kind of your thoughts? Yeah, I think that. You know, it's such a competitive sport, and, you know, you can get so, you know, caught up in the ego and wanting to, you know, be better than these per uh, this person, this person, and wanting to show them up or beat them, but at the end of the day, when you kind of step back from it, um, especially when you're not playing anymore, you look back and you think, wow, these people are actually the ones that taught me, hey, maybe I'm not, maybe I need to work on my left more, maybe right. I need to... Uh, you know, work on this, work on that, and they kind of teach you. They're more teachers than... And you, again, have to accept loss that, hey, they were the better team that day. Mm -hmm. right? They beat us uh, fair and square. But I feel like uh, kids who miss out on that aspect, um, I think it could tra translate into not-so-good ways in life, that having that as an athlete really helps them, right? Mm -hmm. Continue to deal with those things. Uh, very cool. Let's move. Let's see, what do we got? I can see some of this reflection. Basketball is a balance, so always try and explore if you can dribble with your right, use your left that much more. And I think this goes back to improving your weaknesses, right? If your right hand's good, but you fear your left hand sucks, improve your left hand, um, carries on with life, right? Being perfectionist, always trying to get better. Uh, Gary V disagrees, he says double down on your strengths. Screw your weaknesses. Well, that's a little more in business. That's not in basketball. Um, but constant improvement. Is that kind of yeah. your message? I think, you know, kids? there's the literal, you know, teaching for, you know, athletes, for basketball players, of you know, working on your weaknesses. But I think, you know, in the greater scheme of things, I think it's a lot of what, you know, my wife teaches me about, you know, life is about balance. It's about being able to, you know, too much of one thing is good, too much of another thing isn't good. Finding that that kind of middle way, um, and that's kind of the key. So I think it applies to sports as well. Look them in the eye and tell them good game. Why did you want them to look them in the eye? I mean, completely release ego. Don't, don't show crappy body language. Yeah, Accept it for what it is, right? Uh, I remember being frustrated in 17 and approaching this wise senior, and I was like, oh, how do I get better? I did, you know, I did this, I should have done this. and. I was so constantly down on myself, and Steve uh, looked at me and said, uh, Roman, you live to play another day, my man. You live to play <laughs> another day. Don't be so hard on yourself, you know? And I was just going to be a freshman there. We had a whole bunch of seniors who left and just constantly want to be better, but you can't overdo it. There has to be a level of optimism there of next play, right? Forget about it. Don't dwell on that. And I, sure. I appreciate that, by the way. I Obviously, I remember that. I'm being almost 32 now. Oh, what Steve told me when he was 17. God, damn, we're old. We've <laughs> we known each other that long. We're old. That's pretty <laughs> I love this. To me, it's leadership defined right here. When you're, the, when you're the best on the court, show others the way. Help them become better players today. Uh, if you're having some trouble and don't get it as quick, asking for others for help just might do the trick. For, for the second part, let's start with the first part. You're the best on the court, show the others the way, help them become better players today. I'll let you go first. To me, that's leadership defined right there, right? Yeah, I think there's, um, yeah, like you're saying, it is, it's what being a leader is. Um, Removing ego, being humble. Yeah, but, I mean, you never know. I think this, this, this page could apply to the same person. There's days when you will be the best, and maybe helping others when they need help but there's gonna be times when you ain't the best on the court you know and 
um, or in life, and, and sometimes just asking for people around you for help, I think. Right. There's a very there's a lot of value. Right. And you're you within your team. You're only as strong as your crappiest player, right? Your weakest link. So you should be constantly wanting a true leader who's good enough. He's going to want to help others. And it's crazy to me how how afraid kids are of just asking, right? Others and asking for help. I don't know if that goes back as an adult. To ego. As an adult too, it's hard to, to ask for it, help. It is. But I remember I was calling Paul Fangare, and I didn't even know him. And I'm like, dude, I want to be better. I want to get better at the sport. What should I do? And I think that probably surprised people. You know, Who the hell is this kid? You got no ego. He's actually asking uh, for help. So he told me what protein to drink, what this to do. And then I wanted to surround myself with him as well. Who with Paul was a teammate uh, of yours in MIDI as well. And that led on to so many things. And I tell my nephews this all the time. Like, who's the best player at your school? Tell me in the next five seconds you'll be able to say his name. And they go, boom. I go, walk up to him at recess, and I want you to go up to him, and I want you to ask him where they're hooping. Where they're, I don't want to do that. I thought you said you want to get better. I thought you said you want to make the team. And he went and did that, and boom, he was off. And if that guy's where he is, he's not going to re reject you. If he does, he's an asshole. But he's not going to reject you. He's more likely to say, yeah, absolutely, right, and help you out. You can't be afraid to ask. And I think that's what the second – embodies uh, if you're having some trouble don't get it as quick asking others for help just might do the trick this this is some pretty crazy uh stuff so obesity is you know obviously epidemic in our children in this one you felt you wanted to address um all day all day in the gym may be good for your heart but hard work in the classroom sets good players apart Obviously, you focus on education, but there's this formula, pretty pretty unique. What the heck? What made you come up with this idea? Uh, it says, let's it say, uh, Steve, uh, you're not just your body, you're also your mind. A smart basketball player a smart is bat. one of a kind. You got it, man. So it has these uh, kind of puzzles within. And again, check out the link in the description if you really want to see it. Hey, Mr. Carlos, good to see you. Um, but break this one down for Mr. Carlos is an artist himself, so he'd probably be uh, impressed by this. Um, who had the idea to th throw that kind of cryptic puzzle within the formula? Is that just a nerd in you? What, what made it? Uh... Yeah, I don't know. It's just uh, sometimes I don't know where things come from. But uh, yeah, it was just an idea, and I liked it. I thought it was cool. But you felt it's important to also display the aspect of, you know, obviously priorities, academics before basketball. Um, but also letting the reader, the parents, and the kids know that um, exercise is very important. Yeah, right? I think exercise, I think that, again, it goes back to the balance thing. You're not just your body, you're also your mind. Yeah, but I think there's a, you know, you need to practice, you need to practice, practice, but I think school and things like that, it makes you a thinker, you know, it mm -hmm. helps you to think, it helps you to figure out problems. Mm -hmm. And when you can think, and you, when you're smart on the basketball court, it's like, man, you're untouchable. Man. It's like smart guys on the court are... Uh, 100%. I, yeah. could, I couldn't uh, agree more. It's such a thinking sport. And it's actually not a, a physique-type sport, even though you are as swole as you were and, and still are. Uh, <laughs> back then, I think people, basketball and weightlifting, it's more essentially to prevent injury in our sport. right? You look at Kevin Durant and all of them. They're not the biggest guys, but... Uh, what's more important is that's what I had here. You remember the Princeton team? It's a game of pass, intelligence, technique always beats muscle, right? As far as like, footwork in the post and so forth, uh, that kind of uh, embodied this uh, for me. You hit me, man. You made, you made me. I was choking up crying the other day. <laughs> Uh, playing defense alone would would make anyone fear, so make sure to speak up to let others know when you're near. Communication, Communication. setting screens, setting uh, screens. like you said, uh, you're not alone, kiddo. Someone's always got your back. If you make a mistake, they'll help get you uh, on track. When we made a mistake, we had to run liners <laughs> with Pulo, but. Uh, 
you can't learn without making mistakes. I think it's so important. Some of the coaches do it wrong. Would you agree in that way? It should be a learning environment where uh, it's not the end of the world if you make a mistake. So they're not afraid to ask. Uh, somebody's always got your back, right? And you should. I mean, how else do we learn without trial and error? No, right? definitely, definitely. I think that part of it, I think, um, you know, I think this is, this page was specifically for, you know, my children and mm -hmm. hopefully other parents with their children that, you know, we're here for you, you know? Yep, it's you like, can talk to us, right? Yeah, you're going to make mistakes and things are going to be hard. And the last thing you want is an environment know. where they don't want to come to you and talk to you Yeah, no, that's about definitely it. one of my fears when, when they get older. Right. Um, back to communication. Playing defense alone would make anyone fear, so just make sure to speak up to let others know when you're near. Um, communicating on the court, communicating early, calling the screen early makes it so simple, and I'm amazed that kids, uh, I had, the more thing I have to yell at them is, talk, talk, and then they're all just dead quiet. And I'm like, yeah. talk to each other. you got to help each other out. I mean, maybe that's what time is. They build chemistry with each other. They don't want to see their guy get taken out, right? Uh, but when you're guarding someone, you're alone, Easy and I would love, you know, calling right, right, left, left. And it ends up helping us get a turnover more quickly. And over-communicating is the way I like to think of it. But um, obviously that, that was the goal here, is putting that in their head. I'm glad you got yeah? that. I'm glad you got yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, let's see. At the end of the day, if you wish to get ahead, all it takes is showing up while others sleep in their bed. Tell me about this one. I think sometimes it's, I remember when I was, I did some coaching, um, and sometimes the hardest part was just getting the kids to the gym to, to practice, which sounds crazy, right. um, but I think that's, honestly, sometimes that's the only way you get better, is you, you gotta show up, it ain't gonna be easy, you ain't always gonna be good, you're gonna make mistakes, but sometimes it's just about showing up while others are not showing up, and I think that, sometimes that's the then you have the kids who, after practice, want to keep on practicing. You got to kick them out of uh, the gym. But I you know Larry Bird quote went through my head on, on this one: that right now, while you're sitting on the couch, there's somebody somewhere out there uh, who's working hard to take your spot. Mm. And how that kind of drives you up to say, "Oh shit, well, I shouldn't be sitting on my ass," and to go do something. But um, I think it puts it in their head early that insane work ethic uh, is required and now that we got the European market and Europe kids it's even tougher for anybody to go to the NBA I heard statistics like you have a better chance getting struck by lightning than the making it into NBA. the NBA yeah. that was some Warriors camp uh, <coughs> coach but we probably shouldn't tell kids that like okay so these are my chances um, this this one sums up why we're both here right now uh, and when you look back at all that you've done you won't remember the points or games that, that are won. Uh, Eric still reminds me of the time he beat SF State by two points. Um, so that's a lie. No, I'm kidding. But um, at, the, at the end of the day, and I know this one goes into it, it will be those who fought as your friend, brothers and sisters, from now to the end. Um, we barely played a year together, Steve, or two years uh, together. And I'm still here many, many years later because, you know, when you have teammates and athletes, it's something that's hard to explain, but it's just your bond, right? You yeah. went to war. I remember you saying football is like the closest thing to war. Uh, but one thing about team sports is, is chemistry, and I, I think that was so important. What, what were you thinking when? Uh, yeah, honestly, when I look back at my career, I don't remember – games or what games we won which games we lost or how many I, points you scored yeah i don't remember those things and those things are very important to you when you're younger um i only really remember the relationships and the people that i i met along the way um and it's hard to know that in the moment but don't i hope my kids and other kids remember that early remember that it sometimes take a step back and look at the bigger picture but it's hard right. to know it in the moment right that's a be it's a beautiful thing too man um I would have never known you, right? The, the game kind of brought us together in that way. Uh, it's the same common goal. 
Uh, so close your eyes and dream as big as you wish. Maybe you'll see it on or see you on TV. Shoot and go swish. It's actually a female president. <laughs> you saw it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I just yeah, I noticed yeah. that right now. There's so many cool things. Um, I'll let you go first on this one. Like if, pe- if people aren't laughing at your goals, you're not setting them high enough. Yeah. Right? If you, you want your daughter to send a note, it's just dream big and just set that. Right? Yeah, I think you have to have you have to have dreams. You have to have purpose. So I think those things are great. And I think that yeah, I want like you're saying. I want my kids to be able to have big dreams, have ridiculous dreams, and set them super high. Right? Um, and this last page kind of sets a sense of realism. Uh, and if you don't make it, you have the most important job of them all: teaching uh, your child someday how to fall. Um, it, that it, yeah, it's not the end of the world if you, you don't. But now you got an opportunity to pass that on to your your kiddos. Yeah, I think the greatest the greatest thing in life, I mean, it sounds, you know, everyone says it, but the, really the greatest thing is being a parent. And so at the end of the day, if you don't always meet all your goals and things that you always want to do, but if there's something much, much, much better and rewarding and fulfilling out there. Um, you can live vicariously through that. <laughs> yeah, you can live through your kids, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think that's awesome. We just went through the big... Uh, what the hell was the idea? It's hard to answer these questions because you're you're just vibing it and creatively doing things. But then the closet door with with the lace sneakers hanging out, and it fades all the way into um, just the doorknob itself, yeah. with just the spec. Um, a- any insight? Any method to the mass by that? Rarely do people get to actually hear the author interpret things later and that sounds crazy but when this thing is big five ten years from now you're gonna look back on this video and and laugh but uh and people are gonna be looking it up uh as well to hear the author's take um it was just it was just fade out idea was there like there's too many pages here <laughs> i know you went through that thought is this too long but it, it's up to you it's your creation right yeah i think the ending was um it's kind of hanging them up you know it's like this is what I've learned in my process. I'm sure everyone else has their own opinions about what they've learned through the game, but this is mine. This is what I have to offer. Retiring the Hanging them up. Time to move on. That's awesome. That's awesome. I want to see. I feel like we've uh, covered just about any everything. All, all the universal principles. Oh, here, here we go. Here's one. Um, for anybody listening out there, the kid in. Uh, Germany got a girl wants to write a, a children's book looking back on any trials an hour because uh, this was an idea you put it into execution but there's one or two things like you could think of uh, that you would tell that can German hey, hey make sure you do this mm, uh, mm. or this would have saved your time avoid this um, any tips or advice you think of anybody wanting to write a children's book uh, you just kind of went for it was there any side research knowing you? I'm sure there was of like, what can I say and not say in a children's book? Any child psychology? You got four test dummies. That's true. <laughs> right I have then test there. subjects. Um, things I would do or not. I mean, there's such like little technical things with making a book. Like, yeah, tell me about them, dude. Like this is a nine by 12 book. Right. And it's hard to print nine by 12. Little did I know that. Mm-hmm. It's much easier to print on eight and a half by 11, but to do it landscape versus portrait. I mean, these things, the material has been kind of a pain in the butt. Hindsight 2020. Um, just the type of material for the pages, how they lay flat versus glue. There's so many technical things in making a book that I would be happy to explain to anyone in depth um, about my lessons, what I've learned. Um, but and you, you can DM on the IG handles at the B-Ball book. Yeah, but otherwise, I, you know, I think you just got to start. Like you said, yeah, you just got to start. You just got to do it. And um, um, it ain't perfect. This book is far from perfect. But I think you just got to um, have a vision and, um, and do it. And do it for you. Don't do it for, right. don't do it for anyone else but you. And why should people read to their kids? There's so many benefits. I mean, they can Google that, but they're learning memory, cognitive function, right? Their brains are rapidly 
developing it's okay to read to infants i was researching that people often start way too or stop way too early um that you should actually read to them up till 11 mm -hmm. and two-thirds of kids who actually have less than a fourth grade uh, reading level are far more likely to end up in jail, which is pretty crazy mm. of just how simple literacy skills um, are so important. And the emotional bond, right? The empathy and actually spending that time uh, with your kid and, and them hearing you and they love to hear you. So just some tad bit a little research mm. that I did of uh, why we should read to our kids, you know? And uh, we obviously know it's important, but we, we don't know sometimes why, right? There's an insane benefit. Any anything that I missed that that you thought and you know you know right off the bat, of course you should. For reading to yeah, kids. of course you should read to your kids. But we, uh, we, I find it. So. Look, look, we got art and painting behind him. <laughs> uh, you find it. I'm sorry I cut you off. No, no, no. I think that um, I'm sure there are emotional benefits in the future and cognitive development type things. But mm -hmm. I just find as a as a parent, it's it's kind of your time to. Um, it's usually, I feel like, before bedtime, so it's usually kind of a, a, a story bonding. Timer. Yeah, story time, mm -hmm. the bond, and, um... and and their spazzes. It's improving. It keeps them. It helps them focus, have a little bit more of discipline early by having that pause, calm time, and it, it seems to be soothing to kids too. You know, can you believe that? That was forty-five minutes already. Right now? That's I'm impressed. You're a great. That's, host. that's pretty insane. Um, but Steve, say thank you, my man. For letting me into your home, this is awesome, and the guns look pretty big. And, and that, Not mine. <laughs> uh, but we're we're signing out. I'm gonna upload this to YouTube and give it an edit. A uh, huge thank you to Steve for letting me into his home. Um, it says the basketball, but bballbook.com, a children's book written by the man himself, Stephen A. Chang. <laughs> Peace out, guys. Have a wonderful Sunday, uh, and thank you again for watching. Take care. Amazing.